Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's June 9th, and these are your headlines. The first wave of big stripers has shown up on Southwest Ledge this week, and staying in that same geographical area, we're also hearing about the first tuna showing up south of Block Island. Out on Nantucket Shoal, the giant fluke fishing has only gotten better, and sea bass fishing has been phenomenal from Vineyard Sound all the way to Western Long Island Sound. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Now before we get started, I just want to remind everybody about the giveaway. I'm giving away a darter that I make, that I designed, that is, fishes the way I want it to fish. I'm going to paint it a color that you will like, a very universal color. Just They're still in sealer, so I can't show you one, but... Um, that, that's available to anyone that can enter a photo that catches my eye. Um, and I have to say, ever since I gave you guys my phone number last week, uh, the text entries have been flooding in. It's like a whole new world. So I'm going to give it to you again. It's 203-417-4831. You can text me 24 hours a day. And I know a darter is traditionally a surf lure, but you can, I don't care how the fish is caught or what kind of fish it is, you send them my way at danderson at thefisherman.com or at the phone number I just gave you, and uh, we'll get you in the contest. Just make sure you let me know that you want to be in. And remember, again, it's got to show you. It can't be a fish laying on the ground next to your rod or something like that. It's got to show you, your smiling face, and your big fish. Send them my way. We'll get you in the contest, and you just might win. Now, as we move over into Massachusetts, everybody seems to be striper crazy right now. Um, I talked to James Jukes up on the North Shore. He said that the fishing's been phenomenal again this week. They got a lot of sand deals around, and um, presentation has been the key to hooking up. He's been fishing pencil poppers, small pencil poppers, he says, and he's not pencil popping them. He's just reeling them fast enough to tip them over and just make them come in straight as an arrow, almost like a needlefish, just getting that nice little wake and keeping that really like thin but long silhouette uh, stark against the sky and the fish are crushing it. Uh, they're getting fish from like 24 inches to 40 inches doing that and using a few other methods as well. Guys are getting fish on sluggos and swimmers and things like that. Uh, he did say that in the daytime that's been getting pretty crowded. He was in a spot the other day where you know he said usually it's two or three guys that fish there. There were 28 guys there and that's just a new reality. That surf fishing has never been more popular than it is right now. I feel like that's a fact. Um, it's being observed all over the East Coast, and uh, while that can be a tough thing for someone who wants to fish a spot, it's also a great thing for the fishery, um, and just seeing people getting outside and doing what they love. So, you know, it's a trade-off, um, but I think the, the main takeaway there is just that the fishing on the North Shore continues to produce and still looking very good. As we move further south into Boston, now we're starting to hear about some bigger fish in that area too. 30 pound fish, maybe some 40 pound fish in the Harbor Islands, and uh, some nice ones from the local surf as well. All the way down to the North River, Minots Ledge, Tar Pouch, all those areas are producing some, producing some nice fish right now. Didn't get a lot of reports this week from the Outer Cape. I guarantee you there's plenty of stripers on the outer beaches there. And, you know, up in Town Cove, Pleasant Bay, Nosset Inlet, all those places are going to be holding fish right now. Um, I got to spend some time over the weekend, uh, not over the weekend, on Tuesday with Captain Skip Bandito of Fish Bandit Charters. And, uh, you know, we fished Vineyard Sound, fished some places I have personally never been, which was, which was a cool experience. Uh, fished some famous spots like Middle Ground and uh, Hedge Fence. Two places I had never been, read about them a hundred million times in my life. Uh, so that was very cool. We had some high sun. Um, we had a little bit of a weaker tide, so we didn't catch a lot of you know, really big fish, but we had constant action. Fish were pushing squid all over the place. Um, we had fish from 20 inches up to probably 34, 35 inches. So, you know, plenty of fish in, in and around the slot. Uh, the... The main take, the top taking lure of the day was a little uh, Daddy Mac spook, about four and a half or five inches long, solid white. I forget what it, the exact name of it is, but uh, definitely a great lure, and um, really easy to work in that fast-moving water. Once we'd had our fill of the stripers, we took a ride uh, east, headed out to a place called the 90-foot hole off of Falmouth, and we did some sea bass fishing. 
I don't do a lot of sea bass fishing. I actually had more fun doing that than I did the striper fishing. Um, just dropping rigs down deep into that deep water and just kind of bouncing along the sand. Uh, all the fish we caught too were beautiful color. I, I don't know if it's just because they were over the sand bottom or if, I don't know if we just looked extra special that day, but there were, every single one of them was just lit up with turquoise and yellow and all kinds of, all kinds of wild colors in with that black uh, crosshatch pattern. Uh, we really had a great day out there. And Skip, if, you, uh, if you're not aware of, of his business, he's a great guy. He's a football coach. I think that's what he would call himself ahead of anything else. Ahead of a charter captain, ahead of a fisherman, ahead of anything. Um, and with a football coach, you kind of know what you're going to get. You get. You're going to get a boisterous guy. You're going to get a guy that wants to get to know you. And you're going to get a want. And you're going to get a guy that wants to get the best out of you. And uh, definitely found that while fishing with Skip, um, the guy. It's, he's one of those guys. Within 15 minutes, you feel like you're probably going to be friends with this guy for a long time. Uh, he's also runs a uh, fish bandit uh, apparel company. I got one on here. This is his logo. And, um, you know, so if you're looking for some, you know, some sun shirts or a buff or a new hat, maybe check out uh, thefishbandit.com and uh, see if something on his website tickles your fancy. If you're a tackle shop looking to fill a niche, you know, you need some sun shirts, you need some hats in the shop, uh, give Skip a call. I guarantee you he's going to come through and uh, I think you're going to feel like you made a friend for life. So thanks again, Skip, for a great trip, and I'll be looking forward to maybe heading out there in August or September for some Albi fishing, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, my friend. Thank you. As we headed around, as we head around into Buzzards Bay, that's where the bass fishing is the best right now. Uh, we're definitely seeing good numbers of solid fish still. The biggest fish I heard of, um, which was caught from the surf, outside, you know, in Buzzards Bay proper was 44 pounds. I did some fishing out that way myself this week, and uh, I had my biggest fish was 35. This, there's some good fish to be had out there right now. Inside the canal proper, uh, the canal continues just to produce fish. I was talking to East End Eddie today, and he said that, you know, basically what they're seeing is they're seeing fish from just under slot to just over slot. So figure like 26 to 38 inches, that's like the average fish. But there's been a lot of fish in that 40 to 44 inch class. And then a few, you know, a few true giants. The biggest one of the week was a 48 pounder taken under the Bourne Bridge on a jig. Um, most of the fishing has been happening on the bottom. Guys jigging plastics, guys jigging bucktails. Um, but we've got the breaking tides coming up next week as this full moon approaches. That's going to be a really strong tide with that full moon. And I fully expect to see that place pop off again. So, um, you know... If you've got that, if you've got a little time off next week, I might head down there, and you might see me there, because I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna make an appearance down the canal, go to my old stomping grounds for a day or two. Uh, and lastly, outside again in Buzzards Bay, the sea bassing has been really good out there as well. One of the places that's, uh, or some of the places that are really producing well, are some of those deeper holes outside of the spaces between the islands. You know, south or north of. Uh, of Robinson's, of Quicks Hole, of even Can of Pits, that there's, there's some deep water outside of those spots that, uh, that hold some sea bass, and uh, they definitely seem to be relating to like 60 to 80 feet of water right now. So uh, that's something you can hang your hat on there, and uh, that's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. Over in Rhode Island, it's mostly a bass fishing game right now, and we've got two spots that are producing lots of good fish. Uh, the bay. Mount Hope and Narragansett Bay continue to put out good fish from, you know, say 33 inches all the way up to 50 pounds. Uh, since I since we last gave a report, the number of bunker that has moved into the bay has been staggering, and these bass are obviously going to respond to that. Uh, if you can find some schools of bunker, you're going to find some schools of bass. There's also some bruiser blue fish up in there. And if you fish structure and rips, you can find bass of any size. You might find, you know, little schoolies, you know, 25 inches, or you might land on a pile of big ones. Um, guys have been getting them on a variety of things, but live bunker fished on circle hooks has been by far the, the top taker. You know, uh, probably the second place might be trolling a live bunker. Um, and then, of course, third place is going to be throwing something like the dock, a big spook, a, you know, some kind of big spook, a splash walk, something of that type. Um, a lot of fish in there. And the other big news is that 
as we mentioned in the intro, Southwest Ledge has now has its first push of big bass. Um, so this fish, you know, in the 40 pound and probably well into the 50 pound class, hanging on the ledge right now, chowing down on eels, and um, and you can catch them if you head out there. The last little thing I have for you guys bass-wise is that there's been some great sight fishing around Napa Tree Point and inside Little Narragansett Bay out that way. Um, fish to 20 pounds. Mostly guys throwing flies or getting them, but a few guys throwing small soft plastics like a little Ron Z or something like that uh, are also hooking up, so that's something you can pay attention to. Uh, on the fluke front, the best fishing is south of Block Island, windmills in, in that area, but there are fish on the mainland, you know, along the beaches of uh, Misquamacut and South Shore that just not heavily concentrated. And for some reason the squids seem to be kind of disappearing, so it's it's been a little bit of a tough year for a fluke inshore, but the good news is, again, they're showing up out by Block and they're showing up in sizes and numbers. Uh, so if you get the weather, make the run. Uh, sea bass fishing, it's phenomenal. Uh, any one of these deeper spots from Point Judith over to Jamestown, over to Newport, and out to Block, and anywhere in between, uh, the sea bass fishing has been very good. Even some spots up inside the bay are giving up good catches of sea bass. Um, so that's, uh, and, and plenty of solid keepers. I'm not hearing about any giants, but just good numbers of solid keeper fish. Uh, easy to fill the cooler, and... Um, you know, easy to make a meal out of it. And uh, that's the story that I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. Over in Connecticut, it's also very striper centric. We have three areas in Connecticut that are giving up great catches and it hasn't changed. You've got the race, which is pumping out lots of fish. Um, even, even though the whale showed up and seems to have disappeared, uh, even though there were hundreds of boats out there on Memorial Day, these fish just keep on chowing. Uh, guys are getting them on diamond jigs, they're getting them three-wayin' bucktails, they're getting them three-wayin' eels, they're getting them throwing topwaters and, and during the low light conditions. Uh, there are some bluefish out there as well, mostly in the small to medium, you know, say four to seven pounds or so, um, but lots of those as well. Um, so that's one thing. Then the Connecticut River continues to put out good numbers of fish, especially down near the mouth and the reefs outside the mouth of the river. Uh, also Long Sand Shoal. So those those areas are giving up good numbers of fish. In fact, let's toss it over to Mike Roy from Real Cast Charters and hear what he's got to say about that region right now. Hey, good morning. Uh, for the Fisher Report, there is a big change in the fishing over the past week. We have um, migratory striped bass arriving daily. We're catching fish with sea lice on them now. Um, so size and quantity have both improved. Um, <clears throat> fish are not easy to catch. Um, not a whole lot on artificials. Uh, some people catching them on um, soft plastics, but it's mostly uh, a bait bite. Um, there is bunker around, uh, not in large quantities, but there are bunker, and I would expect to see more arriving Shortly, I heard reports of bunker schools out in Central and Western Long Island Sound. Uh, speaking of, of the sound, the reefs are fishing quite well. There's some big fish out on some of the reefs off Clinton and guys catching fish all the way down to um, the eastern part of Long Island Sound. Um, the deep water areas such as the race are holding fish and there are some bigger fish there. Uh, guys are doing well, three-way and bucktail jigs. And also I hear uh, good reports of people using the flutter spoon, which is somewhat of a new technique to the area. So uh, there's a good amount of striped bass all throughout Long Island Sound. Uh, the black sea bass fishing is really good in central Long Island Sound right now. Um, those fish are spawning there. I, I would expect that bite to continue for at least the next several weeks and the keeper to short ratio is pretty good. And for big blues, now that uh, big school of bluefish that was around a couple of weeks ago, that has thinned out dramatically. Uh, there are a few gators out in uh, the deep areas like the race and uh, some of the deeper reefs. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate the report. Talk to you next week, buddy. Um, also on the Sand Shoals, one of the few places where there are reliable catches of fluke being made. Um, on the Connecticut side, most guys are still crossing over. They're going to Montauk, they're going to Block, 
They go into Peconic. They're going to Port Jeff and some of those sandy bottoms out that way. Um, but the two spots that are, you know, in the central eastern sound that are giving up fluke right now are Long Sand Shoal and then some of the areas surrounding Niantic Bay, um, Two Tree Island, Two Tree Channel, and some of those ledges and drop-offs just outside of uh, Niantic Bay. Uh, let's see, there's been some bluefish around the mouth of the river too, some sizable ones, much bigger ones than, your, than what most guys are finding out at the race right now. Uh, also hearing about, you know, finning bluefish starting to show up in the middle of the sound. I actually talked to Matt Broderick from Long Island, and he said that he was out uh, in his boat the other day, and he ran up on just huge pods of big bluefish, all just finning right on the surface. Um, so he said that was kind of in the Stratford Shoal area. Um, so you can kind of uh, you can go look around out there if you want to get into some big bluefish action. Uh, as we head further west, the bass fishing is probably the best bass fishing in the whole region right now. Maybe Block Island might be better, uh, but it's just popping off right now. And for all the details on that, let's toss it over to Max from Fisherman's World and uh, hear what he's got to say. Hey guys, Max here with another local fishing report. Stray bass fishing remains red hot in our area. We've seen a lot of big fish this past couple weeks. There's a lot of fish in that 45 to like 50 inch mark. We've seen fish with 53 inches this week. Uh, guys are reporting a really good bite still on the troll, guys trolling mojos, umbrellas, deep divers, bunker spoons, and then live bait fishing around the bunker schools, big plugs, and guys chunking at night. It's all going on. And now is your time for your big stroke from striped bass. A lot of the concentration remains on the back side of the islands with all these bunker schools flooding in and in the triangle area. Guys chunking at night are reporting they're almost having 30 fish nights with a lot of cookie cutter to 15, 25 pound bass. Working the bunker schools early morning is the best bet, throwing big plugs like the dock and also using the flutter spoons around them and also guys that want to use live bait. To our west, the fishing still remains strong. I've seen a lot of fish in that like mid 40 pound and high 30 pound mark on the troll down west and on the trunk. There's also a lot of monster bluefish this year. I mean, I've heard of bluefish from, you know, the mouth of the Connecticut all the way down to us right now. And these fish are big in that like 12 to 15 pound range. They can be found harassing bunker schools or out in the middle on a flat deck. Trolling wire on umbrellas or deep divers if you guys want to troll. And then if you get them up on the surface, it's always fun to get them on poppers and spooks. Fluke fishing remains really good. We've seen, uh, you know, fish like 26, 27 inches. On a windy day like today, drifting the spoon with whole squid works really well, especially when you have like a two or plus knot drift. And also your traditional bucktail tip with like squid strips, spearing, and gulp. Can 26, the backside of Sheffield, and the backside of Can 24. I would say that like 30 to 50 foot mark right now is really your best bet. Sea bass fishing remains really strong. Uh, guys fishing wrecks are important limits. These guys are getting them on jigs, you know, high low rigs with clam and squid. Places like Bud Reef. The Celtic wreck on 28, you know, the backside of Kakini on those wrecks, and guys heading to middle ground. And then uh, Porgies, we haven't heard of anything from the beaches yet, but this should change going into the end of June with our water temps slowly rising these nice days. But uh, guys that are on the boats are down like 20 to 30, 50 foot mark. So I've heard of them in 20 and less, so that means they're coming in short. Uh, the backside of the islands, you know, any structure really will hold Porgies right now. And they'll take, you know, guys love sandworms, clam, squid. All right, good luck. Thanks, Max. Great report. Really appreciate that. And uh, anyone who's looking to get in on that fishery, especially that striper fishery out in the Western Sound, make sure you check out the June edition and read Max's article on his three methods for tagging a trophy in the Western Sound because it's a great story and it's definitely going to enlighten you and it's definitely going to put you on some bigger fish. On the sea bass front, it's all central sound, at least most of what I'm hearing, I should say, is central sound, some out west. Um, but again, solid fish, no giants, just solid two and a half to three and a half pound fish. Limits have not been too tough to come by. Uh, fishing 50 to 80 feet of water and uh, catching them on rigs, jigs, bait, you know, all different things. Those things are aggressive and uh, really fun to catch. Great table fare. And that's what I have for you guys in Connecticut this week. The tides are turning on the Dreamboat standings with the new entries as of May 9th. The Bluefish category has a new first place entry from Daniel Del Rosario, a 16.1 pound gator. 
Same for Fluke with past Dreamboat champion Sam Dibner entering a monster 12.98 pound doormat for first place Fluke position. Cliff Rhodes entered a 10.15 pound Fluke. Roger Humphreys entered a 9.85 pounder. And Michael Marr entered a 9.6 pound Fluke. And the Weakfish category is also strong. 2021 second place Dreamboat winner Joseph M. weighed in the 6.02 pound Weakfish. Mike De La Palma weighed in a 5.75 pound fish and Charles Williams with a 5.6 pound fish. We have a new first place Porgy entry from Ahmed Solomon with a 3.63 Jurassic Porgy. John Quinn weighed in a 3.25 pounder. In the Sea Robin category, Casey Marekchek weighed in the second position at 3.40 pounds. So to wrap it up, the total point leaders are Ron Carrizano with 18 points, Garrett Weir with 17 points, Dean Paello with 13 points, and Daniel D. Rosario with 10 points. The Dreamboat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber-only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steigercraft 23 Miami powered by Yamaha, along with other great prizes. Subscribe now to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the action. Hey everybody, it's Dave Anderson with a New England edition. Just going to give you a quick rundown on what's gone on this week in the Coastal Kayak Clash. First fish of the week was a 29 and a quarter inch weak fish taken by Mike Radzizewski. That leads the category. The other two big fish of the week were both stripers. First one was a 44 and a half incher taken by Tom Hode. And the second place fish now is my buddy Rui Gonzalez with 45 and three quarter incher. That's good enough for second place in the category. Right now, Justin Oser is still leading the tournament with eight points. There are five guys holding down second place with three points, but there are months to go in this thing. Lots of fish to be caught. We're looking forward to seeing what you guys have next week. Stay tuned to see what it is. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate you guys checking this thing out every week. Make sure you get your photos in. You might win a darter from me. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, head over to the website and check out what we got over there. There's a lot of free content. You know, you get a real good flavor of what we offer. And, um, you know, with a subscription, you get a heck of a lot more. Plus, you get uh, access to all three editions, all the articles we publish, all the reports, all the back issues. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. We'll see you guys next week. I really appreciate you watching. Take it easy.